Tables are one of the most commonly used data structures when solving algorithm questions. And the reason for that is the hash table offers a bottle of wine lookup. If you have a key, you can easily access the value. So if you can manipulate your data or you can perform a algorithm um, using a hash table, it's going to be quite efficient. So in this video, we're going to discuss exactly how the hash table works and also why it's so efficient. A hash table is a way we can store key value pairs. In JavaScript, this is simply known as an object or a map. Hash maps are great if we know the key because we can access the value in O of one time via lookup of the key. So in an array, if we know the index, which is an integer, we can look up the value in O of one time based on the index. In a hash table, it's possible that the key is a string. So to be able to do that lookup in O of one time, we need to convert the key to an index. So let's just consider an object here. So let's consider we got A as a key, and that's going to map to the value 10. And then we've got the character or string of length one equal to say, um, make it something different, we'll make it equal to 20. And then we all have the character or key C, and we'll map that to 30. Essentially, this is just a basic object in JavaScript or a hash table where we got the key as a character and the value as a number here. So, well, in this case, if we wanted to work out the key, we could simply, for example, convert the letters A, B, and C to a number. So let's just say, and this is us implementing our own sort of hashing function, although there's more sophisticated uh, hashing functions that get introduced behind the scenes for us, and JavaScript takes care of this. But this is just to give you the intuition as to how the hash table actually works. So we know that we want it to be an O of 1 lookup. So we need to have a way of indexing things. And we use a number for that. So a very simple case is to let A equal to 1, B equal to 2, C equal to 3. And then when you go to look at your hash table, let's just say it's called H, and that's equal to that. Then when you do a lookup behind the scenes, you can imagine that it sort of works as in a similar way as an array where like H of 1 uh, corresponds to this key here and then it finds the 10 h of you know 2 will get you this value here and that's all looks well and good and that would allow us to access things in all of one time but the problem is is our keys aren't going to be this simple so we need to consider the case or let's consider the case that we got a hash table and we got a as before with the value 10 we got the value b as before with the value 20 and then let's say we got the value a b and that has the value of 30 and then we have the value of say b a which has the value of 40. Now, if we were to use this same simple hashing uh, function here, basically you can already see the problem. So we can see that A is going to equal one, B is going to equal two, and then we're going to have A, B, and then AB, let's say, is A plus B. So that's going to equal to 3. But then we have B and A. And that's also going to add to 3. So the problem that arises is, let's say we want to look at 
um, H3. Well, if we do that sort of look up, we have two different results. So how will it know to give back 30 or 40? And that's what's known as a collision. This is where the linked list comes in handy as it helps us avoid the collision. So if you haven't seen the linked list video, make sure you check out that. Um, but we want to avoid collisions with the keys. So each element, so we can use a linked list to uh, sort of map this instead. So the way this will work is, let's just say we have the value A. So let's say our A value here, we represent it um, as the value 10 here. And then we've got the value 20 here. And then we've got the value 30 here. But then we've got this link list and we can say that, well, we've also got the value 40 here. So let me draw the corresponding keys here. So this is going to be A. This is going to be B. This is going to be C. And then this is going to be D here. So A and B, oh sorry, this is going to be AB, and then this is going to be BA. And we know A is 1, B is 2, and AB and BA are both 3. So using a linked list is a way to get rid of the collision problem. Basically, if you want to look up an element here, let's say we want to look up the element um, AB, or let's say we want to look at the element BA, well, we know that that's going to be in this third spot here, and then we can sort of loop through our linked list, and then if it matches the corresponding key, that will give us the corresponding value without any collisions. You can see that if you use a hashing function to index things. Most of the time we're going to get an O of 1 lookup, but it's possible that we have a O of N lookup here in the worst case because you might get a situation where you've got a really bad hashing function and then all your elements end up in the same spot. Uh, it's possible that they'll be O of N. Now, most languages they do this hashing function behind the scenes and they're highly optimized and it would be very unlikely that you'd get a case like this. So the lookup tends to be O of 1. However, you know, it, in theory, using our crude approach here, um, you can see that it's possible that it'll be slightly more than O of 1. But in general, we say it's O of 1 for a lookup. Um, and this is sort of a rare exception where we say, well, in the worst case, it could be of n, but that's considering this crude algorithm. In general, um, when we're relying on the implementation of the hashing function to be done for us behind the scenes, um, usually there, you know, it, it won't be o of n. Um, it might be o of 2, o of 3, o of 4. It could be slightly worse, but they would round to O of 1 anyway. Um, so hash tables have been implemented such that the hashing function is optimized for performance. And hash tables, because they have that quick lookup, they tend to be a nice solution or with a good time complexity for any problems that can make use of them. So We've already seen this in some of our examples, like the two sum and other algorithm questions where we've seen how the hash table can help speed things up, opposed to using two loops, for example. And having this understanding of how it works under the hood helps us to 
uh, appreciate the data structure more and use it with confidence in that we know that it's going to be efficient to look things up by key if we have access to the key. So we're going to continue to see that in our algorithms questions. And let's go ahead and jump into some.